Hey guys, this is PMR Bones 88 and today for my next horror slasher movie review of the continuation of the Halloween franchises is Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. It's been six years after the last movie of Halloween 5. No one didn't really like this movie and clearly it went straight to video instead of in theaters. This sixth movie is it's, it's really kind of twisted. The story plot is really twisted and doesn't really make any make no sense and including this is like the third the third trilogy of the Thorn Halloween Thorn movies. So the returning cast, um, Donald Pleasance, he returns for the sixth Halloween movie for one last time and sadly he did pass away before when Halloween Curse of Michael Myers went into theaters. Some unfamiliar cast and actors or actresses and uh but the only one that's really familiar and it was his first movie it was which is Paul Rudd so he's really actually much more a familiar uh, actor in which he's been on to like much more of comedy movies because this was his first um horror movie originally Daniel Harris was supposed to return and reprise her character to play as Jamie Lloyd again but since she refused and did not want to return so they had to re replace somebody else so this movie starts out where, where Jamie Lloyd is pregnant and she has the baby and she's only 15. And lately when she has her baby, somehow the nurse um, takes her on the bay to run for safety before Michael does. And where Michael Myers enters and just like kills the nurse and just spikes her right into the wall. And he just looks at her and it's a little deja vu after the same thing where he did in the first one. Where he killed that boy and just sticked him right in the wall with his knife. So where she tries to run away and try to avoid getting killed by Michael again. Jamie's still on the run and before she runs even further she goes into the subway station and hides under the bathroom and that's where she where she hides the baby before Michael even finds her. So right after she drives away and Michael Myers all of a sudden rams into her she heads right into the barnyard hides in the shed until Michael just surprisingly kills her. Jamie Lloyd was finally dead and Michael thought that he got the baby but instead he was only just a roll of paper towels. So anyways, the Stroh families live in Michael Myers' house which they don't even know that that was his house and apparently the Stroh's family um, were introduced and finally shown. The mother's really shy but a gentle, gentle mother and um, apparently they have breakfast and all of a sudden the father's a diplomatic asshole. Their daughter Kara, she stands up to her, to her father and all of a sudden her father just slaps her Kara's son, Danny, picks up the knife and defends her mother, points it right at her grandpa. Like, damn. <laughs> that kid knows how to defend himself and her and his mother. What a trooper. Paul Ryan plays as Tommy Doyle. And those of you who are not really familiar about this not really familiar about this character, he was the character from the 1978 classic Halloween. That was also the day when Tommy Doyle was the little boy and Lori Stroh used to babysit him. Tommy Doyle, he's like, um, what he finds at the subway station was, um, Jamie's baby. So this movie is actually more gory, it's more gruesome, and it reminds me of a combination between of, of the Friday the 13th movies and the Tessa Chainsaw Massacre movies and colliding each other to make, to make one huge Halloween violent gory bloodbath. But as the movie continues on and it was really curious and especially when it explains you about the thorn tattoo and what the curse is really about. And also it explains about the guy in the long black coat discovering who it was. It was Dr. Wynn, which that was Dr. Loomis's older friend. So that explains it all folks. One of my favorite scenes of this movie is where Michael picks up the stick and stabs Mr. Stroh right in the stomach and then he picks him up and sticks him right into the generator and all of a sudden he gets electrocuted and his head explodes. <laughs> what was really crazy about this movie that almost at the end where Michael kills all the doctors including Wynn and then Michael goes after um, Kara, Tommy and Danny including the baby. He goes after them in this one dark room where all the babies that were unborn or died died in birth. But by there when Michael continues and finds them and searches the place Tommy Dora surrenders and gives his baby to him. Dose him like double dose him with these um drugs that made him all dizzy or hallucinate just for a while. Kara hits Michael with a big large pipe, but that didn't stop him. Just strangles her, almost choking her to death. Till Danny tells her to stop her and leave her 
and say leave her alone. And by there, Michael persuades Tommy and the baby and starts freaking out and hysterically crying. And then Tommy Doyle saves the day and hits him a couple of times. Now the one thing that didn't really make sense is where when Tommy hits him a couple of times and all of a sudden green blood gushes out, out of his mask, it, what is it like, um, is he like deca decaminating from the drugs that he took or is he bleeding to death even worse? Is he, it didn't make sense at all, but I guess they wanted to make it much more gorier and disgusted. Almost at the end of this film, Dr. Loomis uh, went back in the hospital trying to take care of some unfinished business. And by there at the end where you see is Michael's uh, mask taken off and the, and the shot and the needle out of him. And all you hear is Dr. Loomis screams out of nowhere and that was the end. Like really, that's the end? It doesn't explain it all? That ending didn't really make sense at all. It didn't really make no sense for me. But I heard there was a, a producer's cut. I guess there was a producer's cut and I guess they didn't want to make it put in video or on DVD for some reason. I only wish they did, but apparently they didn't. So you could probably see it on either on either on the computer or on the net somewhere. But after done talking about this movie, this movie is is really kind of complicated. Another complicated movie, but it's the second least of my favorite Halloween movie. So just to rate this movie, I would have to give it a 70 out of 100. It's really gory. The story plot kind of doesn't make sense, but if you see the producer's cut, it makes total sense and explain to him about his curse and especially with the thorn tattoo. And I do have this movie on Blu-ray and DVD. So the next time for my next horror slasher movie review of the Halloween franchises is Halloween H2O. And this is PMR Bones 88 signing off and saying is PEACE!